Good morning, everyone. It's Thursday, October the 13th, 2016. And uh, everything went well yesterday. Thanks for everybody who was concerned. Uh, I'm still tired, but uh, it's expected, so I'm just moving along. I was sitting here this morning, and I didn't know what to do. I have a couple of uh, devotionals picked out, but it felt like I just couldn't get started. So I'm sitting here, you know, I prayed a little bit to the Father. And I turn, I look at my altar, and I, <laughs> I see these keys that the Father just completely demolished. And I was sitting here and I was saying, only you could do that. <laughs> I was just amazed, you know. So, you know, there's more to these keys. There's more information coming out about these keys. And I'll just tell you in a second. Um, so I'm sitting here and the father tells me, <laughs> look up the post office box number. Of those keys. <laughs> the post office box number was 5335. So I'm, I went to Bible Gateway and I looked it up what it meant in the Greek and believe it or not 5335 means herald. It's a person who proclaims a message or paves the way for a promised event. Hmm, let's see. What's a promised event? The rapture? The second coming of Jesus Christ? The good news? In scripture, both angels and human beings are employed as heralds. And on occasions, even specific events may be herald future happenings. And um, so basically the Lord, <laughs> oh, he picked out the number for that box. He's telling me that you don't need that box anymore. You're a herald. Um, and then in this, in this particular um, d definition, it gives you um, all the scriptures where um, the herald is pronouncing judgment in the Bible or bringing good news. Or preaching the gospel, uh, John the Baptist as a herald, angels as heralds in the Bible, uh, events heralding what is to happen, like a watchman on the wall, Jesus Christ as a herald. Um, I'm going to put this link in the description box so that you can take a look at it yourself. There's every every day there's new things unfolding about these keys and um, interestingly enough I had a very stressful dream last night I'm not going to go into the details but it was about my car again and uh, my keys were taken by mistake by somebody and I couldn't get the keys to my car so there was connected to my car again also and these keys but it was uh, it was interesting that I was just sitting here smiling at the father for what he did with these keys and and he spoke to me and he says go look up that number the post office box number go ahead go look it up <laughs> just more keeps coming out and coming out I'm just amazed at all the connections anyway um, um, I also wanted to elaborate on something I said yesterday about uh, a couple of a couple of uh, incidences where I prayed over somebody. Um, I just want to let you know that it was it's the Holy Spirit that leads you to certain people because when I'm out and about, I see people all around me that have ailments. Uh, crippled people, all kinds of, of um, things that would need, a t uh, you know, uh, spiritual attention. But I'm not led 
every time I see something to go and pray over the person. Um, I'm, I, I wait for the Holy Spirit to tell me to go to these people. The Holy Spirit puts his hand on my back and moves me towards them. That's why these two people that I mentioned to you were receptive to me. It was because it wasn't coming from me. I, I wasn't motivating the, uh, the, um, the, um, the event to happen, the interaction. Holy Spirit was navigating the event. That's why they were receptive to me. If I was doing it from my own self, from my own will, then I could have gotten rejected by that person. And in both cases, I didn't lead these people to salvation. I just prayed over them um, because that's all I was told to do. So um, just want to let you know that um, if you're comparing yourselves to what I did, it's it what did not come from me. It was Holy Spirit navigating me to approach those particular people. And um, I always wait for the signal from the Holy Spirit. I don't act, I try not to act on impulse because it could be coming from me, it could wind up to be a disaster. You know. So I just wanted to let you know that. And I have a couple of scriptures, um, not scriptures, I have a couple of devotionals today. And I just want to say the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you, Father, for another day. Thank you for all your Holy Communion and all these spiritual events unraveling. It's so luscious to hear from you. I just, I just want to saturate myself with it. It's just so amazing. You're just so amazing, Father. I love you so much. Love you so much. Thank you for everything that you've given me, all, all the seen and the unseen to come, everything. Thank you, Father. God bless you, Father, and thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' name, amen. And this is called to loving your enemies. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. And that's from Luke 6, 27. Have you ever felt as though you were fighting a battle and someone you know seemed to make your efforts that much harder? Mm-hmm. I have experience with that one. Not only did that person refuse to help you, but he or she appeared to make the situation even more difficult on purpose. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to such people? Jesus commanded his followers to love their enemies. He understood that believers would come in direct contact with people who wanted to oppress them and make their lives impossible. But he also understood that those same persecutors were souls trapped by sin in need of deliverance. Whether you are dealing with non-Christians or backslidden believers, the same is true. They need Jesus and they need you to reveal him to them. Friends, you cannot change them. But you can control your reaction to them. And you could read about that in Luke 23, 34. As Christ's representative, you are responsible for how you respond. Therefore, don't give others a reason to criticize you. Rather, obey him, do good, and show his love. Because by doing so, you show them the way to eternal life. And a prayer we can say is, Lord, help me show your love and grace to everyone so that others will be drawn to you. Amen. And this next one is called, Not About Comfort. And it says, 
Quote, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And that's from Luke 1, If Jesus asks you to do something and you obey, you can be certain that a blessing will follow. And many times when you submit to him, those around you will join in the joy as well. Consider Mary's response to the angel Gabriel after he announced, quote, You will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. And that's from Luke 131. She was young, single girl, whose obedience to God would certainly confound her community. Yet she submitted in humble service, and through her, the Savior changed the world forever. Mary was not interested in her personal comfort. She realized something much greater was at stake, the kingdom of God. She didn't question the Lord's plan or analyze the situation from a human perspective. She simply obeyed. This is the challenge for you as well. Questioning, doubting, calculating, none of these build the faith that he wants you to have and exhibit. Rather, it is simple trust, like Mary's, that exalts him, and through which he moves in astounding ways. And here's a prayer we can say. Lord, help me have faith and courage to remain obedient to you, even if it means setting aside my own comfort. Amen. Yeah, and you know, Mary, Mary was obedient, and she had to endure... A lot of criticism and uh, uh, harsh treatment from people because she conceived and she was not married yet to Joseph. So she had to sit through all those accusations and things. And um, the Lord used her and blessed her mightily. He used her womb to bring forth our Savior, Jesus Christ. And um, I'm sure there's a very special place in heaven for Mary. And she deserves all the honor um, for for the Lord using her, and and a great example of being used by our Lord. One of the highest um, honors of being used by our Father in heaven. But unfortunately, the church has put her above Christ, and uh, made people to pray to her. And to f ask for forgiveness and all of that. And Mary doesn't have that kind of power. Uh, she deserves, uh, you know, uh, respect and honor for being used by the Father to carry our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But she does not have power. She does not have any power. The only propitiation for sins is the Lord Jesus Christ, who she, her womb was used to bring forth the Savior. And uh, we need to remember that when we pray. Always pray to Jesus Christ for your salvation and forgiveness of sins because he's the only one that can accomplish that. And he's the only one that we can get to, the he through, to heaven through him. That's it. Through nobody else. No one else that lives now and no one else that died. Uh, you must not pray to anyone else but the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He must be put above everything. And on that note, I will say, have a great day in the Lord, people. I love you. Jesus loves you. Be well. Be blessed. Keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. We, every day that passes, we get closer and closer to it. So be well. I love you, everyone. Bye-bye.